Here is the story of how Corona's son came to Rome. In Rome, there was once a horrible pestilence that infected the air and left pale corpses lying as far as the eye could see. When the Romans realized that nothing was achieved either by doctors or by human efforts, they turned toward the heavens. They journeyed to the oracle at Delphi to end their plight. Desperately waiting for a sign, the travelers trembled when they heard the tripod speak these words. You are here, but you should have remained closer to home. Seek help from nearby in the future. You do not need Apollo to end your suffering. You need Apollo's son. Summon my son. Now go and be well. When the Senate received this news, they inquired where Apollo's son resided, then immediately sent envoys to the port of Epidaurus, Greece. After the envoys arrived, they entreated the Greeks to give them the god that had been fated to end their deaths. But Greek opinion was divided. Some believed in generosity, but others advocated for keeping their treasure to themselves. As the Romans anxiously awaited a verdict, night fell. Then, in a dream, the god of health and hope came beside one of the envoys. He stood as if in a temple. His right hand seemed to stroke his voluminous beard. His left held a staff. He spoke these words. Do not fear. I shall come and aid you Romans. Note the snake which coils around this staff, for I will take its form for my travels. Then he vanished, and night became day. The Greek elders had already gathered at the god's temple to pray to ask him where he wished to dwell. Just before they finished their prayers, the god appeared as a serpent, flashing his slitted eyes and issuing a warning hiss. Both temple and people present shook violently. But the priest, wise above the rest, recognized the god. He cried, Behold the god, O most beautiful, bless thy followers. Greeks and Romans revered the deity by repeating these words, until the serpent inclined his head and swayed his crest, assurance of his favor. He glided down the steps and through his glorious temple, just before he departed, he turned and gave a final farewell to his home of many years. As he headed toward the Roman ship, flowers were strewn before him across the pavement, and a train of worshippers followed. On board the ship, the weight of the deity lowered the hull. Overcome with joy, the Romans sacrificed a bull on the shore. The god gazed at the twinkling waters as they were carried gently toward Italy. On the way, they stopped at an island housing a father's altar. The god unwound his coils and progressed toward his father's shrine. He was made welcome by his kin and then left dutifully to continue his journey. His arrival in the Tiber was met with vast multitudes, men, women, children, even the nuns from the temple of Vesta, all praised and shouted with joy. Incense filled the air, Altars lined the shore, and knives were warmed with sacrifice. The god stretched and looked out across Rome to find a suitable residence. As he disembarked, he assumed his godly form, and so Aesculapius, god of health, ended the city's grief. Created using Powtoon.